Hello, welcome back to Dorothy's Dungeon Details. So today we are going to be starting the first of our five videos for paint sets. We're going to have one video per day this week, starting today. And our first one is going to be trying to do a earthen style. Uh, the set, the paint style that I got, I took inspiration from a Kickstarter program and I will show that as soon before I switch over to the thing to show exactly what the goal is and what I came up with. But of course the paint style is not exactly the same since I did make it up myself based off the picture. But just to give you a heads up of what we're going for and to show you exactly what we got. So I'm going to switch, show you that picture real quick, switch camera angles and I will show you the process. Here we go. Okay, so we're set up here now, and these are going to be what the end result is of what we're looking for. Uh, this is one thing that I forgot to show back when I did the prepping. Uh, it's an optional step that you can choose to do is adding extra little cracks and crevices into some of your tiles. Uh, I choose not to do it to every single tile just because it tends to be a little too much in my opinion. But for things like the earthen, it works really well for. So I wanted to show off an example of how to do that. One of the big important things is that you want to make sure that every time you do a crack, it goes all the way to an end of a square. Um, cracks don't stop, basically. Uh, so you wouldn't want to have a crack that just stops here in the middle of the square. You want to end where the end of the squares are. Uh, so those are the final results for what we're going to be going for. And the paint colors I showed are going to be the colors that we're going to be using, but just to go over them, we got Nutmeg Brown, Ripe Tomato, Light Mocha, Brown Oxide, and our black wash that we made if you watched my pre uh, prepping the washes video. Uh, you also will need either black paint or black spray paint, and this is the matte version. Um, those will be your base bl uh, black bombing is what it's usually called and the other optional color will be burnt umber uh, that's only if you want to do walls on your tiles which look like such uh, that you do not have to do walls and especially for something like earthen you do not have to have them I just wanted to show you how I do them and so the first thing you're gonna do is black bomb your bee piece that's where you'll use either your flat black and paint it or you can use your spray paint. Uh, I tend to like to use the spray paint. I can do a full th uh, three pieces of the nine boards and I, that's for doing both sides black bombed uh, with one can and this can that I buy is from Walmart and it's only a dollar so to me that is a lot more time efficient. The tavern side takes about two coats while the dungeon side on the black takes about four so that's gonna be the very first step that you're gonna want to do before you start in your, your pieces and that takes a little while to dry between each of these steps you're gonna to want to let your pieces dry really well uh, I went ahead and have the magic of camera here to help speed along our process so I won't have to pause in between for dry time so the first step you're gonna need is your nutmeg brown and this is gonna be your base coat so one of the little tips for you is instead of having to squeeze out some into a little palette thing, you can use your cap as your palette. Just make sure you shake your bottle before and it'll get some right there on the cap for you. So the first step we're going to be doing is a base coat, but it's also a, uh, what is also some people call an overbrush. Basically we're not trying to get too deep into the cracks there. We're just mainly trying to put some on the top layer. So it's similar to an overcoat, but we are doing full coverage like you would do for a base coat. And I'm just using a classic normal brush out of the brush packs if you checked out my materials video. It's just one of the normal brushes. This one has white bristles on it if you got the same pack as me.
but we will be doing two coats on here so you will still see some black through there on that top layer there Okay, so as you can see, there's still some in, down in the recesses where you can still see the black, and that's perfectly fine. That's what we want to achieve that thing, but it's fine if you also got some like that right there into the crevices. It's not going to hurt anything because we'll be doing a wash to touch up our crevices at the end. So there is the first layer, and you'll want to let that dry. And through magic of camera, bam, dry. So that is the just with one coat on it. And we're going to go ahead and do a second coat now. I'm going to shake up my bottle so I can get more paint back on my top. There it goes. I want to apologize now if I do end up getting out of camera frame. I'm trying really hard to stay in camera frame while painting. It's just a little difficult for me right now. And you can already see the difference there in coverage on that second coat between the two. This was the one with one coat and this is our two coat. Okay. And that's going to be our second coat. And you want to let that dry again in between steps. And bam. Which of course the color does dry a lot darker as you can tell there. So Now we're going to go ahead and switch colors and I'll be switching brushes. You do not have to switch brushes. I like the other brush. I'll go ahead and rinse this out real quick. Uh, just because it, to me it makes it a little bit easier for the dry brushing stage. So this is the brush I was using right now. And it's just a simple white brush. It's got really frimsy bristles. And this brush has more stiffer bristles. And I like it's a little scraggly, but I like it for dry brushing. It's in, in my opinion, it makes it a little bit easier. So and we're going to be dry brushing now using ripe tomato. Once again, shake it to the lid so you can get some on the top. And there's our color. Okay, for this step, you're either going to want some scrap cardboard or scrap paper towels. Something so you can dab off quite a bit of paint to do dry brushing on. So, I'm just going to get just a barely little bit of paint on the brush there. And we're going to dab off almost all of it. <laughs> So, got still a little bit coming off there, but not very much. And so this one is going to be a very heavy dry brush. You're going to want to just carefully stroke it across the top of the thing. You're wanting to pick out that texture and those edges where the corners are on the tiles. And make sure you get those puzzle piece pieces. You want to do a nice heavy dry brush. And you can see there and where it's got glare on it is where it's hitting those textures there. And I try not to go, when I'm doing each individual piece, I try not to go back into the paint to get new paint. I try to just use whatever I put on the cardboard so I don't pick up too much paint. And as you can tell, you can already see where the dry brush on this is drying a lot faster than the other coats are. Uh, dry brushing, I usually find that I can leave it for about 5 minutes and it will be ready to go to the next step. Whereas the other, I usually let them sit for about 30. So, 
there is our dry brushed piece. Oops, I feel like I got out of step here somewhere. One coat, two coats. Okay, so there is our dry brush. And the next, so there is a piece after that was completely dry. As you can tell, I went a little heavier on that one than I did on that one. So you can definitely go quite a bit heavier. So, because with the wash, we'll dim out the color some. So I'm going to use this one as I go ahead and swap over to our next color dry brush. So the next color is the light mocha. Once again, shake some to the lid. And this one is going to be a very light dry brushing. So on this one, you want to get almost all your paint off of the paintbrush before you start dry brushing. So as you can see, there's just barely anything coming off now off the paintbrush. And going over, because we still want some of that orange to peek through, but we want to make sure we hit, which this is some of the things from using the heat gun. You can see right there where that's the result that it gives from where the picture curls up. Uh, I tend to leave them on there just because, uh, especially when I'm doing tiles like these, the earthen, it just adds another layer of texture and it gives something else, some more aesthetic to the ground, makes it a little less neat. Uh, if you're doing something though like a like castle floor or something, you may not want those and you may want to try to swipe away those pictures when they're curling up like that. Just a little more there. Okay, so there's that, and there's the dry after look. As you can tell, my paints are not coming out quite as well from where I'm having to do that. I suppose that's because my brush is more wet, and I let them these dry in between more, so that can show. But they still will tie really nicely together, so. so that, okay, so we're going to go ahead and swap over to the next stage. So the brown oxide is only used, really necessary for when you have the cracked pieces like this. Uh, you can choose to do it on any of the other ones. I only tend to really use it very much for the cracked ones. Um, so I'm going to use this one just to show you an example. When I'm doing my light mocha dry brush. Let's get I go ahead and anywhere where there's a crack, for instance, that I want to really stand out, I do an extra bit of dry brushing in that area. And that's just to help make the crack stand out some more. Uh, as you can tell, that's very heavy for compared to the rest of the piece there. And after that dries up there, then I'll take the uh, brown oxide color and I'm going to do a dry brush over that and kind of in between that. If yeah, that kind of makes a little bit of sense, you'll see in just a second exactly what I mean. But I'm basically, going to take and go in between where the cracks are and kind of go over it and kind of doles out a little bit on the color there. Which is like I said, it'll dry darker, but you can kind of see in there how it's 
accents the crack a little bit better there and helps it to stand out a little more and makes it look a little more worn in those areas. But that's the only time you'll really use the brown oxide. Okay, so the very last step is the wash. So this is the finished piece except for, for the wash. And like I said, we I make the wash back in my prepping wash videos. This is the wash made using the Apple Barrel Black. And it's just about, from the bottom here, this much paint, and the rest is water. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and swap back to this brush. Uh, one of the important things when you're using the wash is you want to make sure that before you do it, you shake it. Um, as you can kind of see here a little bit, the paint, this is this is made from the brown oxide, but the paint tends to separate, and so there's like an orangey shade down here, there's more blacker up here, and so you want to make sure that you shake it up really well before you use it, and that'll just reintegrate some of the colors back into the paint, and so that way the uh, colors even throughout your whole project as you're doing it. And like I said, you can just do that once or twice before you uh, actually start using it, but... The black, it's a little harder to tell if it separates, so you want to make sure you shake that really well. Uh, for this, I do like to use the little palette, and that's just to give it more ease because it's such a liquid that you won't get very much off the top of the cap on this. So I got a little bit set here in my palette, and as you see, it's really liquidy. It sticks to the top, but it drains off really easily. So you're going to take those and just going to run it through the cracks. This is where using a slightly angled brush is a little e makes it a little easier, but you can use the flat ones as just as well. So run it through the cracks. And that's going to add a good bit of paint down in there and re-help accentuate to those. And then lastly, I take just a little bit dib, a little bit dipped on my paintbrush still, and do a full solid brush over the top. And this will help to blend some of those. If you got any stark areas where you got your paintbrush a little too heavy, it'll help blend those up together, and it helps make the whole tile look like one. So after that, I like to take and just take a paper towel, put it on top push right on the top just lightly and as you notice it just picks up just off the top piece there and that helps to make to where it doesn't get too dark uh, first off I want to go to apologize my camera kind of cut off on me there so uh, we are on the final step after the wash this is an optional step uh, that we're gonna do real quick first uh, and that's create walls of course with something that's like an earthen style you don't have to create walls but and this is if you want to. I use the burnt umber color to make the walls. You can use black, but with this, it seems to blend a little bit better with the just dark brown shade. So I'm just going to paint just the edge using that grid line as a guide. And you're just going to paint the outside edge. So in this case right here, I'm doing a hallway. If you wanted to do a corner, you would paint this side and this side here. If you wanted to do just a single like wall, you paint just this one side, like what I'm painting right here. Um, trying to think what are some other pieces. Any center pieces, you don't have to paint anything on. Uh, there are like T-way corners would be where you just paint the single uh, corner pieces, like such. Uh, if you wanted to do like an entrance way into a room, you could do where it's just like that, one little corner piece and a wall. Or you could do... Uh, what is it called? Corner turn, where you'll cor corner here and then put a color of this piece centered as well. And that'll create your different things, which I have an example to show you in just a second here. And this paint does dry darker, you'll see on my little sample pieces. It's more of a dark chocolatey brown than this rich chocolate. But there we go, that is our hallway piece, and this does create a nice start. One of the benefits of putting it on the tile itself versus making a th more 3D piece is that you can use them directly next to each other without having to worry about the it disfiguring the map any. 
So we're going to go ahead and attach it here just to give you an example. So there's our hallway as our path, as our adventurers are moving in. Tilt that up just so you can get it into frame better. And they come across to a room here. Just a little small room, and it leads to a fork in the road. And this is what I was talking about here, where you can put your walls directly next to each other and have two hallways right next to each other without any problems there. So that's how the walls are useful to your tiles. And we have corner piece here. We have the single edge. We got hallways here. And then we have over here, we have one of those entrance tiles where just that little corners there is done. And we have a corner hallway which has this one corner over here painted which these ones are optional pieces you can just use a single edge and just a corner piece it just means that these two squares right here won't be colored and doesn't affect gameplay at all it's just personal preferences up to you there but this is just using the nine piece tile set that shows and you can easily take your hallway pieces then from where they came in earlier where you see the one still wet that we just painted and let's say they go down this fork and so you just go and connect this over here and just keep the pathway going so it doesn't take very many I would say that with two to three mats you can easily make a nice dungeon set as long as you keep moving your tiles along with your players as you go so but there you go and we have one final step. We're going to go ahead and use our little craft piece here to show you off the final step for any of our tiles. And that's going to be to seal in our paint coats. Uh, so there are a couple of different things that you can use. I like to use Mod Podge. You can also use the basic school glue. But once it is completely dry and you are absolutely sure there is no wet paint on there because you do not want the Mod Podge to smear anything, just put just a little bit of Mod Podge into the center. Oops. Your paintbrush. Oops, I need to grab. Sorry. So, you get your paintbrush. This is just the one that's older that I've been using quite a bit, so I'm swapping it to just a glue brush. It helps to keep your bristles a little cleaner. And just going to do a nice, good coat of the straight Mod Podge over the top. This is going to help to seal in the paint and to help make sure that it is a lot more durable for playing. Because these are light foam pieces, they uh, people tend to just pick them up and chunk them around the table if you when you're doing cleanup and stuff. So this helps to protect your nicely worked paint schemes and keep from any of that happening. So it's a nice solid coat of Mod Podge. And I like to go over the edge just a little bit. I don't worry too much about painting the edges because they'll be covered up when you put the puzzle pieces together. So I don't worry about that too much. But I do like to make sure that I go over the edges just so that way you don't have any chipping coming off that edge. And this dries completely clear, so you don't have to worry about that affecting your paint color. Uh, one thing is the Mod Podge will slightly activate your paint again because of the moisture in it. So you may get a little, it'll blend your colors just a little bit more. Which to me is not a bad thing in some cases. But if you're really worried about it, you may want to be a little more careful with your brush strokes than I am. So, there it goes. And we're going to let that, you just let that completely dry. If you feel like you're going to be using these quite a bit, you can do a second coat of the Mod Podge. Make sure when you're doing your, if you're using Mod Podge instead of regular school glue or any kind of spray sealer, that you do the matte version. You do not want to make these tiles glossy, especially for something like the earth, uh, earthen tile. So that's going to be it for our video, and I hope you check out next. Our next one is going to be a gray slate uh, style. So please tune in again tomorrow, and we will have that ready. Thank you. Have a great day.